everybody. I'm Laura Kortner. I'm Bob Hieronymus. This is Dr. Bob Hieronymus, and we are here to give you a special edition of the Yellow Submarine University, where we're going to be talking about our bonus prize market in time for the holidays. So many of these items you see behind us are valuable prizes that we're offering as bonus prizes when you order a copy of our book, A Most Unique Take on the Beatles' Yellow Submarine. So if you are a fan of animation, of the Beatles, if you know somebody in your family who's a fan of the Beatles, or if they love symbols and color, or the history of animation in particular, how this film influenced what you watch on TV today and in the movies, then you're going to want to watch what we have to say. I was mostly working on this by myself, but ran into some problems, and I needed the uh, intelligence of this young lady over here, who is a lot smarter than I am. I wouldn't say that. I would say that, because <laughs> it's true. Um, but this book uh, needed another balance to it, because this was really about the struggle we had to get the book and, and the Beatles to allow us, because they didn't want us to write this book. And that uh, really hurt when found out that, hey, I know this is an important book, and we're, we're going to write it, but you won't allow us? I, I felt that was well, absolutely wrong. I think it's wrong. important to distinguish between the Beatles and Apple Corps when you're talking about you're that. You're right. Because it's the lawyers who controlled Apple Corps who were opposed to having anybody but them put out the story. That's what their objection was. They wanted to control the history. And in the beginning, when the film first came out, they liked the idea that the press was putting out erroneously that the Beatles had made the film. Yes. And I remember mm -hmm. you talking about that. When you first saw the film, you thought suddenly the Beatles had learned how to become artists as well as musical mm -hmm. geniuses, but somehow they'd mastered the art of animation <laughs> overnight. You know, They allowed that to go forward without giving the people, the hardworking artists, which you are also one, yeah. I think that's what motivated you. Well, that's the, one of the reasons why I decided I was going to push it no matter what. There's all kinds of reasons why the Beatles didn't embrace the film or the artists as they made it. They made their contractually obligated visits to the studio for the press photographs. But other than that, they hardly saw the Beatles. These young people, mostly young people, gathered together as a, a working tribe. I like to call them a merry tribe, a family. They really had a family sense about it, a mission, a purpose to, to portray what they thought of as their heroes, the younger people. There's, a, there's, toward a, there's two different levels of people who worked on this film. And in this book, we talk about the older set. Yep. Right? And People some like them, me. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. They were in their 30s and their 40s, some of them close to 50, you know, wearing yeah. suits and ties. They'd been in the animation business for 20 odd years. They Some of them were World War II veterans. They'd worked for Disney animation. They were tried and true animators. So this was just another job to them. And they were tired of talking about the Beatles. They'd been doing the animated series on TV for a long time. I call them the elders. The elders, yeah. And, uh, and what, how many pages was that one? 426. 426. Yeah. And you would think that we that's enough to write yeah. about the Beatles. <laughs> but no, we did another 350 yeah, or something, something like that. And we could have gone on. Yeah, we could have. We thought we were done. Yeah, sure did. <laughs> but as soon as it came out, we started hearing from some of the younger people and said, hey, I have a story to tell. For the longest time, we said, no, they can't possibly tell us anything we haven't already heard a couple of hundred times because we've <laughs> talked to so many people. That's right. But lo and behold, once we did, they started telling us stories and sending pictures. That's what I love about this book, pictures of the actual people who worked on the film, sure. on the set, at the Dog and Duck pub, having a good time. You won't see it anywhere else. The younger set had a great deal of time. They had to come up with all kinds of things to keep busy in the beginning of the production because... There was... Right. There, there was, was no script. No script. Well, actually, there were too many scripts. That, <laughs> that's a good point. That they had no script. Point. They had too many scripts. Yeah, and that's uh, and that's one of the key things that slowed everything down because mm -hmm. the scripts were not good at all. Right. So a lot of this is yeah. the um, history you can find just about anywhere if you study the Yellow Submarine. But what you won't find in any other book is the particular take upon this this film that. Only an artist and a, a trained symbologist, which Dr. Bob is, can give you. So we break down things like, what is yellow? What is the symbolism of yellow? And what does it mean when you put it on something that is submarine? Marine being a 
water, of course. The water is often used as a, a symbol for the emotional, the emotional body. So Very under so. your emotional yeah. body, yellow being a symbol for the mind. Mind. Intelligence and fire and the divine mind in some regards because of the sun and the equation with the divinity there. So you combine these two concepts of higher mind and underwater and you've got a message. We were also looking about what was going on in the world around us. At the time of 68 when it and, first came and out. And we saw a lot of bad things that were coming. Yeah. yeah. And my heavens, we sure, sure got it all in the face. Here we are again, right? Yeah. It's not like it's the same thing all over again, but it's an interesting parallel between that time and now. The song, in fact, started to be sung at peace rallies, uh, very famous ones, because the peace activists were trying to become more fun-loving. They were tired of being portrayed in the press as a certain way of being militant and militaristic, so they deliberately tried to make their their parades more fun. So they started building these big submarines, the floats and whatnot, and doing demonstrations with them and singing the song as a protest song. This is a big element of why the Beatles remained popular throughout the 50 years. This is a cartoon that's, right. that's main, maintained its popularity for 50 years. So should we talk about some bonus prizes? I'd love to, especially about okay. about one or two that, that weren't even supposed to be seen. So, once again, you want to visit our website, order a copy of our book, either one. Of course, you can buy the book at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, any bookstore can order it for you. But you're not going to get an autograph, and you're not going to get the option to get a special bonus prize, like John Lennon glasses. How cool is that? I uh, remember when you bought these, but there was some complication, wasn't there? Yes, the, the uh, Beatles told them to stop uh -huh. <laughs> and, told, and stop making them. So and that, that turned really them into scared, a limited yeah, edition. That scared me because I wanted to buy as many as possible to give them out. It says John Lennon Eagle Eyewear. It says it's licensed, but I guess it means they put that out before they actually got licensed. And then they had to pull them off the market. How, right. How do you like, you like that? They're great. You know what I really like are these fishermen's hats. Oh, these. Yes. You got a yellow one. Yep, you got a yellow one here. Portholes and an orange that, one with the blue bead on Isn't that cute? Front. Yes. That is adorable. Just in case we're interested in becoming very fashionable, you can have a yellow submarine face mask. We don't have many of these. Yes, do we do. We, have, we do. We have about a dozen. Oh. But. Can I have this? No, one? that one. That's mine. Okay. <laughs> you don't want that. It's been used. I don't get a chance to see these, some of these things. Huh? But you can have this. Tell us what that is. Oh, that well, of all what, of what the things. What you got there? Ah, this is a yo-yo. The yo mega, the yo-yo with the brain. Look at you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> anyone can do that. Not necessarily. But, What's that? Oh, that was. Oh, this is McCartney, Uncle Paul. It's Uncle Paul's shirt. From one of his concerts. Did you go to that one? No, or I didn't go to this one. As a matter of fact, I seldom went to any of them. There. But I was puzzled by. I was puzzled Naka. by his eyes. Uh -huh. like, what's going on here? I don't know. Have, what, Some how type. does that? How does it feel to you? Um, it looks like he's looking down, sort of melancholy. And then the colors are, I'm sure you could make a wonderful symbolic interpretation of the fact that it's yellow and blue and orange. Keepsake ornament. Oh. I oh. love the holiday ornaments. Yeah. Oh, well, they made it out of the postage stamp. Remember that yes, postage stamp? That's right. 33 cent stamps. That tells you how long yeah. ago they came out. Yeah. But that, that was in, uh, let's see, 1999. Cool. Yeah, when close they to that. first released the redigitized Yellow Submarine and the U.S. Postal Service made a stamp. In fact, they made a whole lot of stamps. Yeah, we do have one of these. The 1960s, celebrating the century. Yeah. And they decided to put the Yellow Submarine as one of those, celebrating the whole 1960s, along with Woodstock, of course, Martin Luther King, landing on the moon. I think that's the guy that broke Babe Ruth's record. There's a Barbie doll. We can't go away out of history without the Barbie doll. Yeah. And the Beatles. This is a, a bag. We have one here. That we've just pulling right out of the oven. So it's a lovely gift bag. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. These are just some of the items in the bonus prize market. Let me tell you, we have so many things in there. <laughs> some of them a lot bigger and nicer than what we're showing you here. <laughs> this one This especially. is one of your favorites. Oh, yes. This is that is the pop-up pretty... book? Yes. Yeah, so... They, oh, it's the panorama. I love the way the Beatles... The, pop, it is the pop-up. Their work, that, that how it's presented, uh -huh. is always so good. 
Oh, look at that. That is so clever. Yeah. Some people have and, been inspired to make some very clever things. Yeah. Oh. So just pull it out like an accordion. It shows the whole business. Yeah, it's double-sided. And you can see these things are cut out. Oh, the it's... The die-cut paper. So handsome. 50 years of yellow submarine. Far away, 80,000 leagues beneath the sea, lies Pepperland. Mm. Can you imagine introducing your children to yellow submarine? Oh. There's a bandana. I think, yep, that's a yeah, bandana. That's the last one I had. Lovely. And must not forget the McFarlane figure is very popular amongst our bonus prize market. We have, uh, we don't have all of them, but McFarlane put these out and they have a version of the yellow submarine beetles and another version of the Sergeant Pepper beetles. And each one comes with a different uh, side character. So this would be the, the yellow submarine John with the Jeremy Hillary Boob. Jeremy Boob, that's his boy. Hood, the mm -hmm. nowhere man. We also have a special hardback collector's edition for those of you who are into that kind of thing, numbered uh, limited edition. And if I were you, I'd get that one. Oh, you would recommend that uh, one? Yes, I really okay. would because it's a handsome. Yeah. So uh, happy Yellow Submarine, everybody. See you next time.